Today we're out here on the streets asking people why they think the Constitution's outdated and whether or not we should take away or add to. Let's see what they have to say. I don't know a lot about this stuff. I really don't. I should. Well, you should know about I that. Know. I mean, you this is we share this. we share this country. <laughs> I know. You know, you're we right. should we should all be proud Americans. We should all know these things. You know. You're right. I know. Come on. I need to learn more about it. I'm sorry. Yeah, you do. <laughs> No, it's not out there. I can't even think of any right now, but I know that some of it is because it needs to be re-looked at. A lot of it, uh, the gun rights, I think, need to be changed. I think it's not an outdated document. People have to follow it more. What do you think about the right to privacy? Oh, well, they definitely overstepped their bounds on that one. With the NSA? Yeah, definitely. How does that make you feel? Like I'm being watched all the time. Doesn't make you feel too good, does it? No, I don't, I don't like it at all. I'm just kind of busy, so I, I, I haven't been really able to think about it. So I'm just kind of going to school and whatnot, so. Well, when the Constitution was written, it was written to protect the public. There were a couple of things in there, like the Second Amendment, the right to bear arms. That has been distorted. It was in order to protect the pioneers from the British invasions, and they had to have guns to hunt. They didn't have supermarkets like we do today. And that was the reason they had the right to bear arms. So you think we should completely revise the Second Amendment? Do you think we should just get rid of it completely? Well, the Second Amendment has something in it that is very important. I think that if uh, you are in a situation where you need to bear arms, yes. What that situation would encompass, I can't say. But in general, the public should not be allowed to have guns. I don't think you should rewrite that. You should just get rid of all the politicians that are making the decisions right now. All the old cronies. Yeah. Let's get a whole new group in there. That Supreme Court guy that wants to change is about 90, about 190 years old, isn't he? Do you think we should add anything to the Constitution or take away anything at all, like the free freedom not, of speech, right all. to privacy? Not, not at all. Not at all. Do you think it's okay that the NSA completely violates that right there, our, our right to privacy? Um, that it it's debatable if they do or they don't. I mean, so they say it's for our own good. If yeah, that's what they say, that's but I mean, <laughs> who knows? You know, as an American, though, you don't feel like you've been violated, though. You know, we give them all this power, I, this trust. I, th I think the government violates us every day. I, I can't understand. Uh, I don't know. Like, I go to school here, but I'm from Colombia. I live, my whole family lives in Colombia, so I really. Well, you're here. You should care about it. It affects no, I you. Know, I do about it. The thing is, like, I don't feel educated enough to say, like, I completely support this. We are living in a world right now that's terror-ridden. Uh, it's got a lot of problems, murders, robberies. But that's I mean, always been going on. Yes, but the pop. The only reason is, though, is the social media. Now you just have more viewing of it. And I think that's wrong, too, because there's a lot of copycat uh, uh, crimes going on, all right? Uh, school shootings. They publicize it. Why? Somebody says, hey, that's a good idea. I'll do that too. Things like that are wrong. The media has to stop publicizing crime, and they're doing that. So so you don't agree with the First Amendment, the freedom of speech then, no, the freedom for press? Do. I absolutely do. Are you just saying it should be monitored? Absolutely. As you can see, there's a lot of varying opinions about the Constitution. Some people know, some people don't, and some people flat out just don't care. My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere from all of the nuclear testing and radiological accidents. Radioactive contamination is now in most of the food supply. There's only two ways to avoid this. Move south of the equator or properly protect your thyroid with nascent iodine. Looking to protect my family, I've done deep research. Nascent iodine is the purest, cleanest, absolute best form of iodine to protect yourself and your family. It's made right here in the USA, completely non-GMO. I searched out the best quality and now have developed a double strength form of nascent iodine, exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Nascent iodine is on record as one of the only safe ways to detox from fluoride poisoning. Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Secure your super high quality nascent iodine today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Hi, I'm Shane Steiner. A lot of you have been following my progress using Supermail Vitality. 
the last 19 weeks has been an incredible experience. I was feeling a little down and lethargic during the holidays, and none of the supplements that I was taking were doing any good. That's when my longtime friend from high school, Alex Jones, introduced me to Super Male Vitality. I was a little skeptical at first. Not only would I have the energy to work out and go to the gym, but it, it was actually the changes were happening to my body uh, a lot more rapidly. My whole mood, my libido, everything had completely changed. The concentrated organic herbs, they stimulate your natural systems to produce the natural hormones that you need. I just really wanted to, to bulk up and hit it hard, and I went in for about the first five weeks and was lifting heavy weight and just really hitting it hard, and I gained 20 pounds of muscle immediately. Since that, I've decided I was gonna lose some weight and slim down. I just changed up my workout a little bit, and 35 pounds came off. Folks, this is not a joke. This is not a gimmick, it's real. Super Male Vitality, available at InfoWarsLife.com. Welcome back. Now, there's many aspects to the Nevada Bundy Ranch standoff, but the one that drew our attention, the one that made it a national story, was the iron-fisted tyranny of the BLM. Now, going back to 1997, a video resurfaced today from Ron Paul where he was warning about arming the BLM. And of course, not just the BLM, but many bureaucracies. Now, he said, what we're going to get is a growing army of bureaucrats, armed regulators prowling the states where they have no authority. Exactly right. Steve Stockman, congressman from Texas, sent the U.S. code to the Secretary of the Interior and said, if you have to use armed force, you need to contract with local legitimate law enforcement. That is the federal law, which they ignored. Of course, they ignored the Constitution, imposed free speech zones, that sort of thing. Remember that the founders said that where the, the people fear the government, there is tyranny. What I saw there was a government that was very much afraid of the people. As they pointed their weapons at those of us in the crowd, virtually all of us were unarmed. Guns were nearby. We were not pointing guns at them. They were pointing guns at us and threatening to shoot. And I saw the fear in their eyes as they backed down. We have to disarm the bureaucracy. Ron Paul warned about this in 1997. It's more than twice as large of a standing army that we have today. And he also warned that there was never any authority for a federal police force that even the FBI was not tolerated in America until the 20th century. Here's what he had to say. Mr. Speaker, earlier this year, another member severely criticized me on the House floor for declaring on C-SPAN that indeed many Americans justifiably feared their own government. This fear has come from the police state mentality that prompted Ruby Ridge, Waco, and many other episodes of an errant federal government. Under the Constitution, there was never meant to be a federal police force. Even an FBI limited only to investigations was not accepted until this century. Yet today, fueled by the federal government's misdirected war on drugs, Radical environmentalism and the aggressive behavior of the nanny state, we have witnessed the massive buildup of a virtual army of armed regulators prowling the states where they have no legal authority. The sacrifice of individual responsibility and the concept of local government by the majority of American citizens has permitted the army of bureauc bureaucrats to thrive. We have depended on government for so much for so long that we as a people have become less vigilant of our liberties. And as long as the government provides largesse for the majority, the special interest lobbyists will succeed in continuing the redistribution of welfare programs that occupies most of Congress's legislative time. Wealth is limited. Yet demands are unlimited. A welfare system inevitably diminishes production and shrinks the economic pie. As this occurs, anger among the competing special interests grows. While Congress and the people concentrate on material welfare and its equal redistribution, the principles of liberty are ignored and freedom is undermined. And more immediate, the enforcement of the interventionist state requires a growing army of bureaucrats. 
since groups demanding special favors from the federal government must abuse the rights and property of those who produce wealth and cherish liberty, real resentment is directed at the agents who come to eat out our substance. The natural consequence is for the intruders to arm themselves to protect against angry victims of government intrusion. Thanks to a recent article by Joseph Farah, director of the Western Journalism Center of Sacramento, California, appearing in the Houston Chronicle, the surge in the number of armed federal bureaucrats have been brought to our attention. Farah points out that in 1996 alone, at least 2,439 new federal cops were authorized to carry firearms. That takes the total up to nearly 60,000. Farah points out that these cops were not only in agencies like the FBI, but include the EPA, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife, the Army Corps of Engineers. Even Bruce Babbitt, according to Farah, wants to arm the Bureau of Land Management. Farah logically asks, when will the NEA have its armed art cops? This is a dangerous trend. It's ironic that the proliferation of guns in the hands of the bureaucrats is pushed by the anti-gun fanatics who hate the Second Amendment and would disarm every law-abiding American citizen. Yes, we need gun control. We need to disarm our bureaucrats, then abolish the agencies. If government bureaucrats like guns that much, let them seek work with the NRA. Force and intimidation are the tools of tyrants. Intimidation with government guns and the threat of imprisonment and the fear of harassment by government agents put fear into the hearts of millions of Americans. Four days after Paula Jones refused a settlement in her celebrated suit, she received notice that she and her husband would be audited for 1995 taxes. Since 1994 is the current audit year for the IRS, the administration's denial that the audit is related to the suit is suspect, to say the least. Even if it is coincidental, don't try to convince the American people. Most Americans, justifiably cynical and untrusting toward the federal government, know the existence, the evidence exists that since the 1970s, both Republican and Democratic administrations have not hesitated to intimidate their political enemies with IRS audits and regulatory harassment. Even though the average IRS agent doesn't carry a gun, the threat of incarceration and seizure of property is backed up by many guns. All government power is ultimately gun power and serves the interests of those who despise or do not comprehend the principles of liberty. The gun in the hands of law-abiding citizens serve to hold in check arrogant and aggressive government. Guns in the hands of the bureaucrats do the opposite. The founders of this country fully understood this fact, and I yield back. Well, that's it for tonight's nightly news. Join us again tomorrow at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Celebrate the spirit of freedom and liberty upon which our nation was founded at InfoWarsShop.com. Molon Lave is ancient Greek for come and take it. This popular design combines both classic Greek Spartan imagery with modern M16 assault rifles. Now available in women's tees and proudly made in the USA. Celebrate the spirit of 1776 with the George Washington brass belt buckle or this incredibly sharp looking 1776 hat. Badass. And be sure to check out the new arrivals at InfoWars Life, where you can prepare your body to perform at peak levels with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine, Super Male Vitality, and Fluoride Shield. And wake up, America. Immune Support Blend is the healthy choice for the gourmet coffee lover. So get incredibly high-quality, freedom-based products and help fund the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. Members can share their passcodes with up to 11 other people, and your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.